Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Uh, I talk about it a lot, but usually kind of on a, a superficial level uh, because it's, it's, it's a deep subject. And, and the subject I'm talking about is substantial and insubstantial and comparing that to yin and yang. And these are um, super important concepts. And you know, regarding substantial and insubstantial, you know, when I wrote uh, Taiji Chuan Through the Western Gate, I, in chapter three, I talk about it uh, directly and, and at some length. And the, because um, it's really so important, it's something that uh, Yong Chen Fu uh, said was the most important thing to consider about Taiji Chuan. Uh, his uncle, Yang Ban Hao, you know, he said, if you don't know insubstantial and substantial, your Kung Fu is wasted. And so, and then uh, the father of, um, uh, the founder of uh, uh, Wu Stao, Wu Hao Stao, uh, Liu Xu Yang, Xie, Liu, Liao Yu Shang, there we go. Um, he, uh, he said that, that the you must clearly distinguish between insubstantial and substantial that every point, every point everywhere has its own insubstantial and substantial and that throughout the universe there is only the one insubstantial and substantial. So it's like something, it's like a cosmic principle, you know, to, uh, to him and it is to me as well. Cause it, to me, it is, it provides a way of talking about I, what I consider to be the deepest metaphysical, spiritual ideas, and it's a way of communicating them. And uh, so understanding that is super important, but it's also important on an incredibly practical level to be able to actually understand your Taiji Tran and be able to execute it. So if I may, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. We'll do an exercise in a bit to, um, to actually bring that into, into the body, but it's, a, it's really a key point. So the, uh, the Chinese term uh, for, in, for insubstantial is shu or xu, which is uh, xu, and the, for substantial, it's shu or xi, um, and that's, uh, so basically it means you know, fullness or emptiness, being, non-being, um, form and void. There's all kinds of ways of thinking about it or just more density versus less density. So when you think about it as, you know, it's usually translated as substantial and insubstantial. And when you think about substantiality, it's, what does that mean? It's what is substance? And this is something that I'm not gonna speak about as a broad philosophical con uh, concept, because that's something that is thousands of books have been written on the topic, and I uh, I don't want to go into those particular waters right now. I want to talk about it as regards our practice, and so that what that means is what is substance? It's it's how much stuff is present, and Substantial and insubstantial are always, always, always a statement of relationship. They're always comparative. And so you're always looking at substantial compared to what? Insubstantial compared to what? And when you do that, when you identify that, then you're able to see clear what is what you're doing. Uh, and... Um, Ordinarily, you know, it's it's taught, you know, at the at the beginner level as which is your weighted leg. You know, if you if you're standing and your your weight is in your left leg, then that is the the substantial leg, and the right leg is the insubstantial one. And that's that's a, a practical way of, of thinking about it, but it's also you know, a really superficial idea as well, because it. Um, it doesn't really get down to the, the you know, what makes the, uh, the art work. 
And that is the, you know, the substantiality of my, my right arm, say, is, you know, I can see there's meat and bones and, and there's, there's a form there. And when I look at that, that's like, oh, okay, that's, that's the substance. That is the density. That's its density, its fixity, it's how much stuff is present. So there's a lot of stuff there. The air in which this, this arm is moving is nowhere near as dense, nowhere near as stuck or fixed or, or, or as much stuff. So it is by comparison to my hand, to my arm, it is less substantial or it is what we say insubstantial. So by comparison, but only by comparison, because if we take that air and we look at the, you know, the, the molecules of the air and uh, we amplify that and we get the air moving really, really fast, let's say we get it moving 100 miles an hour, then suddenly that air, which before was really insubstantial, is now pretty substantial. It's got a lot of stuff there that it makes it uh, have an impact. So we have to think about, okay, compared to what? So the, you know, the air that is moving in a hurricane is a lot more substantial than the air that is sitting here in my, my, uh, my living room right now. So always by comparison, it's always a statement of a relationship. And consequently, you can think of the, it as the two terms as mutually arising. That is, they, you can only have substantial if you have insubstantial because you got need something to compare it against. And the same thing is true of yin and yang because yin and yang are ways of talking about the way that stuff either expands or contracts. If we're talking about yang, we're talking about the expansive or reaching the extending quality of, of of stuff. The yin is the condensing, contracting, retreating, receptive part aspect of stuff. Again, both of these are comparative terms. They are a statement of relationship. So the question that came up is, are they the same terms? You know, do we, are we talking about the the same thing when we're talking about insubstantial substantial, particularly as regards to a tai chi form? And the answer is no. They are they're talking about two different things. One is talking about how much stuff is present, talking about how much being is is present in anything that we're anything we're discussing. The other thing is talking about whether the stuff is expanding or contracting. So when we're talking about yin and yang, it's always about stuff, whatever the stuff may be. It may, even the stuff may be thoughts, you know, they are emotions could be, could, could be, have their own substantiality. Words can have their own substantiality. They can be yang words or yin words, depending on whether they open or close. And so we have that. So when we're talking about a um, application, we look and say, okay, compared to what? So it's you're all, it's always, always, always shifting. So anytime you think about, you know, is that substantial or insubstantial, it's going to shift depending on what you're talking about and how you're looking at the thing you're talking about. Nothing is ever permanently substantial or insubstantial. So it always, you have to say, compared to what? So in this case, let's say, if I were to reach out with my right arm, it is substantial in that it is, there is, it is the, uh, that which is more, uh, uh, more present, more stuff than my left hand, which I'm not moving. It just sort of, my left hand is hanging out there. 
So by comparison to my left hand, it is more substantial. My left hand is more insubstantial. And, um, but if I'm pulling down with my left hand and my attention is on my left hand, then it becomes substantial. The right hand going out is yang, it's extending outward by comparison to my body. My, I'm reaching out from my body, so therefore it is yang. If the left hand is coming down and in, it is yin re, 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 uh, in relation to my body and also in relation to the other hand. So the, they're pulling uh, apart. And so this is the left hand coming down and in, that's yin. But if I'm, if it is getting my awareness, my attention, it becomes the substantial hand. So I hope you're getting the idea here that it is entirely dependent on your relationship to the thing that you're talking about. That it's not an objective thing. It is something that is regarding your relationship to it. And, um, and it's directly, it directly correlates to how much attention that you're giving it. So um, if I stand up and I allow my body to be supported primarily by my left leg, it becomes the substantial leg. If I bring that down into my right leg, and it's now the, the primary substantial leg or uh, supporting leg. It's, it is substantial. It is where I'm getting, I'm feeling my support there. My attention goes to that. However, if I reach out with my, with my left foot as if to kick, it has become substantial because that's where my attention is now, even though my right leg has become you know, it's, it's still the supporter. The left foot coming out, that's yang. If I pull it back in, that's yin. So the, it's, it's, a, it's constantly in flux. And it is driven by your attention. And this is what makes it really cool and really useful, I find, in, in, in any kung fu. That is... Wherever I'm bringing my attention, wherever I'm directing my attention, that becomes substantial. And with that, it takes on qualities that are not present in the less substantial aspect, whatever that may be. So if my I'm bringing my Pong Jin to my right arm, that takes on qualities because I am bringing my attention to that, to that right arm. It's becoming, it's becoming more full. And, uh, ah, you know, it, it, it has stuff. And um, if I just stick my arm out there and I'm just, it just like something I do, but I'm not really directing my awareness there. If I'm not directing attention, then it's, it has much less substance. It has much less stuff. And consequently, it's not as useful as if I, hmm, if I bring my awareness there, if I bring my intention, my focus on, on that. 